Hi, Al Williams with Hackaday here. This is part two of the GRC tutorial I wanted to do. And I, this time I wanted to show you a little more about how you'd actually use it with a radio. So I've started with a flow here, and I wanted to go through the blocks rather than show you how to build it piece by piece. If you want to go back and figure out how to build things piece by piece, that was the last video where we did some connections between the sound card and some signal sources and the FFT blocks. So I'm going to presume you know how to go grab the blocks and set them up and configure the GUI and all that because we covered it in the last video. If you recall, when you made a new document, you got two blocks automatically. You got this options block and you got a variable with SAMP rate in it. So you'll see SAMP rate here is 2.048 megahertz. And on the options, uh, I did base this on some other work here. You could look those up if you want. Uh, I cut a lot of things out, tried to make it a little simpler, and changed the design slightly again to simplify it. And if you recall, we used QT GUI on the last project, that one. But this project used WX GUI, and since that works on all the platforms too, I just went ahead and left it that way so you could see the difference. And there's not much difference. You'll see there's some GUI stuff here, and they all start with WX. We'll talk about some of those later. But the real key is this Osmocom source. I have a SDR play box connected, and that's a little box, has an antenna connector on one side, a USB connector on the other, and it lets me, you know, process RF, just like a sound card lets me process audio. And of course, in this particular case, it's input only. They do make some boards that are two-way. Uh, but this particular one I can only receive, I can't transmit, so this is never going to be a sync, it's always going to be a source. The Osmocom source actually handles a lot of different types of hardware, so if you've played any with the little USB dongles that are made to receive TV that are very inexpensive, uh, you'd probably have used the same source, and you just set different configurations here. The SDR Play is very similar, but it's got a lot more features. It's got more frequencies it can read, it's got more bits per sample, it's got filters that switch in depending on what frequency you're reading, things like that. So it's a little more money, but it's a lot more capable. So let's look at the properties of that OSCOM source block. You'll see it already puts out complex numbers. If you recall in the last example we were getting floats from the sound card and we had to convert them to complex if we wanted complex data. In this case the only thing that will come out of here is complex data. And that's the I and Q samples, if you're familiar with SDR. Some of these options are probably for other hardware because they don't make much sense. For example, channel 0, antenna 0. Well, there's only one antenna, so I'm going to guess that's not really for this piece of hardware. But you can see the usual suspects, sample rate, the frequency we want to read. Uh, I've got the offset and IQ balance modes to auto. I did leave the RF gain to manual, and I've got that set to a GUI item called RF gain. We'll look at that in a little bit. And you can see the bandwidth is considerable, over one and a half megahertz. The first thing you'd normally do if you had a radio block like this is you're going to translate the frequency you want down to zero, and then you're going to cut off the frequencies you don't want with some sort of filter. There is, in fact, a translating FIR filter that you can use to do that, but in this case, the source already has translated that frequency down to the zero point for me. So I didn't really need to do that. So all I did was just pick up a normal low-pass filter, you can see right over here, and put it in. You can design all sorts of sophisticated filters using all sorts of different blocks, and you can see that here. Uh, you know, a Hilbert filter will let you recover the IQ signals, for example, or you can do FFT filters or DC blockers, whatever you want. If you, I'm not going to cover it here, but if you really do want to get into designing interesting filters, there's a filter design tool on the tools menu, and it's very powerful. It lets you pick the kinds of filters you want, uh, the mechanism for implementing them, the number of poles, uh, or taps, rather, uh, you know, all these different things that you can do. You can analyze it, and then you can save it off, and you can load it in. So I'm not going to cover this, but it's pretty interesting that there's a very powerful filter design tool that you can use to build custom filters here. When this data comes out, it's, you know, at that sample rate, which is 
basically 2 megahertz per second. And I'm just driving that FFT sync directly from there. So you can kind of see the whole band in a big display when it's running. But that's a lot of data to be processing just to pull an AM radio signal out. So I've got this low pass filter like I mentioned. And one of the things it's going to do is it's going to decimate that sample rate. And that's just a fancy way of saying I'm going to divide. So 2 megahertz basically divided by 32. And if you notice, this sync is set for the same sample rate. But this sync that comes after the low pass filter is set for 64K. And that's that sample rate divided by 32. In fact, if you look in the properties, that's exactly how I wrote it, is sample rate divided by 32. So if you change the sample rate, that would still get the right number. So once it goes through that low pass filter, everything above 5 kilohertz is going to get cut off and we'll have a different sampling rate. I needed to sample it even further. I needed a fractional sample because I want to go to 48 kilohertz for the sound card. And so I used a rational resampler. And you notice it's got an interpolation and a decimation. So essentially it divides by the decimation and it multiplies by the interpolation. So if you work it out, the 64K divided by 16 and then multiplied by 12 gives me the right rate that I want. That's all that block really does. So now we're going to go into what in a traditional receiver would kind of be the IF stages. And I just have an automatic gain control here. There's a couple of parameters. There's also a couple of AGC blocks you could use. I use the AGC3 because it, it kind of captures fast. But you might want to put some user interface on here. You could do things like a slow versus fast AGC, things like that. You could put gain in here. I didn't need that. Uh, there's ways to do other things. You can read about it in the documentation. But this essentially is just an automatic gain control. It keeps a strong signal from swamping everything, and it tries to bring the low signals up up to this maximum gain. Now, in a regular AM receiver, I might have a diode to do my demodulation. Here I've got this AM demod block, and you can see I'm still at 48 kilohertz. I don't decimate any, although I could, right? If I needed to change the rate for the sound card, I could do that here in one swoop. Uh, I've got an audio passband of 5K, and then I wanted, I could just run that out. You'll notice it just changed to a float, right? We went from the blue, which is complex, to the orange, to the float. And you know, if you go to help and hit types, if you can't fit, remember, you can actually see all the colors and all the types that go with them. And that's true even if you've noticed, you probably have, like here, those colors correspond to those types. That was a bad example because it didn't have any other types, but you can see where you've got different colors for different items. So I could just pipe that out to the audio sync, which is the sound card, but I wanted a volume control based in the receiver, so I put a multiply here. And you say, well, that multiply is multiplying by 1. What's the point to that? It's not really multiplying by 1. It's multiplying by AF gain. And AF gain is this GUI slider whose default value is 1, but I could change it at runtime. So there's a couple of things that are hooked up to GUIs. We have an RF gain slider, and then the frequency actually comes out of this text box, but we add a coarse offset and a fine offset using these sliders so that you can kind of fine tune it. And there's the filter width. There's a few other things, but that's the main items. So let's see what this looks like. And I don't have a very good antenna attached right now. It's a rainy day in daylight, and uh, the antenna is really tuned for the ham bands. But let's see if we can't hear a few things over the speakers. And I'll assume my microphone will pick up what's on the speakers. So I set the default to 15 megahertz, which is WWV frequency. And we don't hear anything right now, but very likely it's because we need a little more RF gain. So that's WWV. Right now the lady's making an announcement and it's kind of hard to hear. Like I say, I think that's more of the fault of the antenna. Just to show you what a strong signal would look like, I'm going to go over to a local radio station. 
I'm in the Houston area, so 740 kilohertz. So we can help you figure all that out. Bottom one is this. And I can turn the gain way down for that because it's a very strong station. Meaning when you liquidate them to reinvest them elsewhere in a different strategy, right. there's going to be a tax liability. The advantage of the annuity is that the interest rate. And you can see you can change the filtering on it. Which means was it your aunt who passed? You can change the volume. There's the fine tune and coarse tune for the frequency, which would adjust that frequency and change what we're listening to. You've got a lot of options. I'm going to turn the volume down. You've got a lot of options on the FFT that are just built into the FFT block, so you can do auto scaling and how you average and persistence and all that. Not really all that interesting. You can see there's another station over here, for example, things like that on the FFT. So. That's basically, you know, for a couple of blocks, a pretty reasonable radio. Now, you could do other things to get better features, better filtering, demodulate single sideband or FM or, you know, anything else that you wanted. But I wanted to keep this really simple and uh, approachable, uh, a handful of blocks, not really a whole lot more than the example we did the other in the other video. But because of that Oslocom source and the Play SDR, uh, you're picking up radio signals on your computer and processing them. So that opens up a lot of possibilities for decoding data broadcasts and uh, experimenting with scrambled modulation and just all sorts of things like that. So that was kind of the point I wanted to make is it's pretty easy to get started with this stuff. This is a great learning tool and it allows you to pretty easily experiment and build SDRs without a lot of actual hardcore programming. But you can, in fact, get into the hardcore programming if and when you need to do that. And it'll still interface with all this just as well. So that's about it. Be sure to read the Hackaday Companion post, and it'll explain a little bit more and talk about some tips for getting this working with Linux and Pulse Audio and things like that. But uh, that about wraps up the video. Thanks for watching.